Is that me, Sean? Yes? Right, the music of healing there from our Buddhistic friends. Uh, I think it's always good in, in life when you can chill for a moment or two. Wait about, what, four minutes of it there, Sean? About four minutes there for you to have relaxed and taken life easy for the time of the Buddhist chanting. And that sort of low chant of the Buddhist, very, very important. You know, that kind of... That kind of thing. Very, very good for the soul, I think. Patricia, how are you? Okay, thank you, Ron. This woman is Patricia Magnolti, and she's from Victim Support. Yes, that's right. It's lovely to see you. Thank it's you. a year or two since we last met. Yes, at least, yes. Absolutely, yeah. and Victim Support was in fledgling days in Yuri then, was it not? That's right, when we first met, yeah, yes. many years ago in Ballybot House. Absolutely. And um, we're now based over on uh, 12 John Mitchell Place um, yes. in, in Yuri. Yeah, and you know, the, 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 the time in between, it's been a growing time, but it has it been a, a growing time of dependency on victim support. People need you more and more. Have you found that to be the case? Well certainly there hasn't really been um, a reduction in crime or I should say the reduction in the number yeah. of clients that we're working with and our service has grown and developed over the years which is uh, possibly one of the reasons why it's increased the take up of our service. Yeah. Um, but we're the only charity that's um, that works with all victim, victims uh -huh. of all crimes. Yeah, I, I, I'm uniquely placed to be a subject of yours, because I tell you a story. Well, I'm over it now. Right. But 40 years ago, when I was a young man, I was in my house, middle of the night on my own. My wife and my children were, had, were staying in the mother-in-law's house. And in the middle of the night, I heard the creak of a, I heard the noise of a window in the conservatory close and open close. And I thought, oh no, it's just the wind, it's nothing mm -hmm. more. But within five minutes, I heard the creak on the floorboard outside my bedroom door. Right. Well, I was a diver in those days and had a huge sealed beam torch for under the water, an iron beam torch. And I went to the door and I had the torch there and the left hand got the handle and I opened the door, shone the torch. And I illuminated and blinded a tall man wearing a, an anorak and a hood and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, and he said, no, 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 he said, I said, don't move. And I held him at arm's length. I said, down the stairs, if you move, this torch will open you up. And I threatened him. But I didn't engage with him. Yes. And that was the wise thing. I engaged to the point of bringing him down the stairs, sitting him on the seat and ringing the police. Right, okay. And he protested and then he went quiet. He said, I was only looking a place to stay. Well, in my head was the knowledge that my entire family, if I had not been there, the girls would have been there on their own. Mm -hmm. So the police came, took him away. And then I thought to myself, I wonder was he on his own? And then I started looking around and I found in the kitchen floor the empty leather sheath of my camping knife. And I didn't know where the camping knife had gone. Yes. I searched, I found the camping knife dumped under the seat where I had placed him. Right. So he had come up the stairs armed with the camping knife right. and uh, had chosen not to use it. So. I, to this day, that fellow got uh, a, a sentence that was suspended for two years. Yes. Uh, but to this day, at three and four in the morning, if a fly touches the window pane, I'm up yeah. and I'm out. Yeah. This has not left me. Yeah. I have been a victim for the last 45 years yeah. as a consequence of that. I've, I've learned to live with it. I've got over it. Is this a fairly typical scenario for people? Uh, people will, especially in the immediate aftermath of the crime. They become very jumpy, very, you know, mm. they're hyper vigilant. They mm. hear every noise. But as you say, that does stay with you. Oh, totally. It stayed with you for 40 years. It has done. Yeah. I've but overcome it. Yeah. It doesn't cause me a problem. Uh, and I, I, I think good watching cuts the head of bad luck. Yeah. I put it, I put, you know, I lock doors now. I'm, I'm careful. I don't do silly things. Well, you know. you know, one of the main things to help overcome a crime like that is if you're financially in a position to um, improve your security, like a burglar alarm would yeah. be the main deterrent. 
and that would be something that the you know the police would recommend yeah um but obviously there's some people that may not be in a position to go yeah. out and purchase you know or incre yeah. improve their security but that certainly will give a lot of reassurance yeah. the the check in the doors and uh, windows to make sure they're locked yeah yeah that well that's not a bad thing you know yeah. to get into the habit well, of can we do some can we offer i just like to offer some if there is someone out there at the moment now we've heard what you've said if there's someone out there at the moment who uh, uh, who's in a situation of needing improved security, mm -hmm. but as you say, doesn't have the money yeah. to do it. Uh, I just want to say, if you contact me at Destination Nuri, I will engage with you and make sure that we can do something to improve the security at your home. If you're a person, an old person perhaps, or uh, you, you are nervous, you don't have the correct uh, security at your home, you're frightened, you're worried, that kind of thing, contact me, I will engage with you, and I will make sure that you get the work done to your home that will allow you to sleep safely in your bed. And that will be done at no cost to you. So I think yeah. that business of having a solid and good night's sleep, yes. uh, and to do so without fear of being destroyed, yeah, that that's a hugely important that thing, isn't it? That makes all the difference yeah. then, in, in mm. helping someone to heal and recover from yeah. the experience. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, the police may have some security measures, and then the Police Community Safety Partnership here in Uri mm -hmm. may also be able to assist. But um, you know, if they come through to you, Rowan, or you can make contact with, we'll make with sure, me. We'll make sure that they're looked after. Yeah. That's because if it's only one person, then there might be a hundred other people would do it for one other person, yeah. you know. So we get people helped, and that's that's important in life, isn't it? Yeah, we do offer that practical assistance. Good. Um, and we are volunteers. We're a voluntary organization. Yeah. We rely on our volunteers. Um, and what do the volunteers do? Tell me. This is well, good. they are trained. Uh, we offer accredited training. Um, so our volunteers come from all our right. volunteers. Uh, um, counselling skills counseling, to, be able yeah. to be able to provide the emotional support, ah, yeah. um, you know, to listen, to reassure, um, and help the person um, talk through their exp and explore their feelings and to come to terms with the experience. And is it your experience that talking through helps? Yes, yes, and yeah. it often helps to talk to someone outside the family. Um, the reason being, like m many people out there, that you know that are being affected by crime. They don't want to burden their family or they don't want the family to know the extent of you know what they're experiencing and how difficult it is but isn't them. this the ultimate irish foolishness the the family are the very people who want to put the arms around you yes. and make sure you're going to be all right but we we withhold and we withdraw and we hide and all of that kind of thing that's an awful pity we should outreach to people well having good support from family and friends is one of the factors that will help a person come to terms mm -hmm. with and get over the experience of the crime mm -hmm. also you know other factors such as you know possibly other life stresses if they've got health or relationship problems that's going to Im impact mm -hmm. on um, trying to come to terms with the experience are we is it your experience that people are potentially uh, i'm using the wrong word but i think you might know what i mean potentially weak and vulnerable that that people if they get a knock ordinary people going about their ordinary business of the day I'm thinking of friends in the Dominican who were attacked recently uh, going about their ordinary business and they're held at gunpoint yes. that must cause people they're, they're drive people to the edge of, of of what they're able to deal with well I have to say I've met some very resilient people who've been through so many stressful mm. life events and you know i admire you, you yeah. know their strength yeah. of, of character and ability but why, why why if they're strong do they need to go to you um well again there's different aspects of our service we do provide emotional support but one of the other services is our criminal injury compensation service mm -hmm. where uh, we help people get um compensation if they've been a victim um does it go back 45 years no, uh, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't qualify. Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. It passed the. You don't the mind time me asking. No, no, no. Right. Pass the, the time limit, and you need to. It needs to be classed as a, cr a crime of yeah. violence where you've had treatment for your injuries. Yeah. Yeah. But that's another you of can our help services. People with us as well. Yeah, we yeah. deal with that. We can assist at all stages through mm. review and appeal processes. Um, Fantastic. So and uh, people, are you? Are people beating a path to your door? Is it a constant busyness with you? It's a. It's a constant, steady flow. You know our numbers rarely go up or are, are down from month to month mm -hmm. um, so yeah we're, we're busy um, we've, we're a small team of um, four staff mm -hmm. in the Nuri office 
Um, but then there are a team of volunteers that are, are working. And wow. We would have outreach centres, for example. Yeah. We would see clients in Kilkeel rather than expect them to travel to Newry mm. to see mm. us. Mm. And um, then another aspect of our service is our witness service. What's that? Um, like? Supporting victims and witnesses um, before, during and after court cases. Does that mean if I'm summoned as a witness that, that I, I'm not allowed to say, well I am allowed to, unless the court requires me to appear. Yes. But if I'm summoned to go and appear in court, that can be a nerve-wracking bit of business. Yes, and uh, you know, especially for the um, the direct victim as well. Obviously, yeah. you know, other family members, etc., will be affected yeah. um, when someone in their family has become a victim of crime. But yes, we would have um, we can arrange a pre-trial visit. <coughs> so, if someone who's never maybe been inside a court isn't familiar with the layout or the procedures, we can arrange that so they can go along and view the empty courtroom where the case yeah. is going to be heard, and that's available for the victims and the the prosecution. I think maybe witnesses. in reality the worry in that sort of situation isn't the empty courtroom or seeing it or whatever. The, the, if I give evidence against you, you're going to come and break my windows tonight or, or any extrapolation of breaking windows that you want. So people need support because they're frightened. If I talk, I'll be shot. Well, I suppose if, if there is special measures available for vulnerable and intimidated witnesses, you know, if they would be at risk of harm by um, being seen in the courtroom. But for the majority of people, the reason why they go to court is to make sure that person isn't going to come back and break their windows yes, a second time. Yeah. You know, if they didn't proceed by um, taking the, uh, an individual to court, mm -hmm. that's something that could be happening to them week after week. Of course. So by going to court, that's meant to be a deterrent mm -hmm. from um, them being victimised further. Patricia, you've got a strong, you have a strong persona, you have a strong organisation. It's got a good feel to it. How do people contact you? Um, Self-referring. Um, yeah. We're, as I said, based at 12 John Mitchell Place. 12 John Mitchell Place. Which is place. right opposite the gates in Yuri Market. You ah, see yeah. the signs on the door. Yeah. We're in a building on the top floor beside the Driving Theory Test Centre. So yeah. when people go to do their... Well, theory test. Thank God I don't have to do that. I'd need all the support in the world to do a driving theory I test. I wouldn't like to have to do it myself <laughs> now either, but um, yes, that's where we and are. And is, is there a phone number as yes, well? Yes, it's 028 yeah. 3025. Hold on, 3025 1321. 1321. And, and it's in 12 John Mitchell Place. Yes, or even by email, people. Yeah, if they email prefer. is. It's Nuri. Nuri. At victim support. At victim support. NI. NI. Dot org. Dot dot UK. Dot. Wow, I hit that as an email address. <laughs> it's easier to do semaphore. Right. You say, do you ever find that? You dot NI. Dot org. Dot government. And you go, wow, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, Why don't they make it more simple? Well, you could just victim uh, support at Newry. Well, good. That's not what it is. It's easier maybe then just to Google our website yeah. and then you can get there through. You have it. Yeah, and the Patricia, referrals will Thank come. you for coming. Thank you Wish for you having well. me. Okay, Rowan. Sean will play you some music now. All right, love. Sean Maestro.